Have you ever thought about the fact that the rear view mirror in your automobile is a lot smaller than your windshield? Well, that's because the most important thing about your journey isn't what's behind you, but what's in front of you. I remember hearing the story of a man who was losing his memory and he went to his doctor to be examined and eventually the doctor told him, we can't solve uh, the physical problem that is creating a loss of memory without surgery. But surgery might very well impair your eyesight. So you're going to need to make a choice. Would you rather be able to see well or to remember well? Well, this man thought for a long while and then said, you know, I'd rather have good eyesight than a good memory. When the doctor asked him why, he answered, well, because I'd rather see where I'm going than remember where I've been. Yeah, that sounds like wise counsel to me. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote that he was going to forget those things that were behind him and press on to that future day when he would be with the Lord, Philippians 3.13. Now, the Bible happens to be filled with prophecies of your future. And let me tell you, it's a lot more encouraging than your history. The prophet Joel has reminded Israel of, of what is or, or soon will be their past, that plague of swarming locusts and the prophecy of an approaching swarming enemy invasion. Well, they were designed to cause the people to turn back to God. Now, the last half of this little book of prophecy focuses farther down the road, in fact, way out into the future actually all the way to the end of human history. It looks to what the Bible refers to as the latter days, those future days that bring divine judgment. There are also going to be a time, by the way, when Israel is going to turn to the Lord in repentance. It's going to experience the fulfillment of all of God's covenant promises. Well, for our wisdom journey today, let's pick our study back up at chapter 2. And Joel is describing that future day, the latter days of Israel. The Lord says here in verse 28, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, this prophecy here clearly looks to this time called the latter days when the Lord's Spirit will be poured out on all flesh. Now, the context here suggests this refers to all Israel, that is, specifically to the Jewish people. This outpouring will be accompanied by special visions and dreams as well as cosmic wonders in the sky, the sun is going to be darkened and the moon made blood red. Uh, let me tell you, beloved, this hasn't happened yet. It's still out there in the future. Now, there are many false teachers claiming to have visions and dreams from God in fulfillment of this prophecy, but they disregard the context of the tribulation period. That's when all of this is going to take place. Now, much of the confusion stems from a misunderstanding of Acts chapter 2. That's when the Holy Spirit descended to indwell the disciples in Jerusalem. The apostles spoke miraculously in various languages to the crowd that day. And, and Peter referred to this prophecy right here in Joel chapter 2. But as we'll see, by the way, when we get over to the book of Acts, Peter isn't saying the tribulation period has begun or that the signs of Joel are all now coming to pass. Peter is simply saying there that the Holy Spirit, of whom Joel prophesied, has indeed arrived. This 
prophecy is related to the day of the Lord at the end of the age. This prophecy here in Joel specifically refers to that tribulation period. In fact, over in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12, we're told specifically that in the future tribulation period, the sun will become black as sackcloth and the moon like blood. Well, in that terrible time, uh, however, many people are going to come to the Lord, in, including many of the nation of Israel. They're going to they're gonna call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Well, when is that going to happen? Well, chapter 3 and verse 1 tells us here. Let me read it. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem... God is promising a time of restoration for the people of Israel. In fact, that's mentioned frequently in the Old Testament. And it's going to begin with Christ's return to earth after the tribulation, when the Lord will be welcomed back by believing Israel as their Messiah. That's going to be a wonderful day. Now, here in verse 2, we're told that immediately following the return of Christ— Joel says, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my heritage Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land. Well, this is a promise of a judgment in the future of all those who survive the tribulation period. It's going to take place in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, we don't actually know Uh, exactly where that is, but apparently it's near Jerusalem. Interestingly, Jehoshaphat, which was the name of one of Judah's kings, means the Lord judges. Now, in particular, the nations gathered there are going to be judged for the way they've treated God's chosen people, Israel. This is the judgment, by the way, Jesus describes over in Matthew chapter 25, where the Lord separates the sheep, believers, from the goats, unbelievers, at the end of the tribulation period. The goats represent those who've rejected Christ and mistreated the Jewish people throughout history. Verse 41 of Matthew 25, in fact, says that they're going to go into an eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Well, now back here in Joel chapter 3 and verse 9, we find this call for the nations to prepare for war. The judgment in the valley of Jehoshaphat that we just read about is the judgment of the living, unbelieving nations on earth. What are they going to do? They're going to gather together to fight against Israel at the end of the tribulation, just prior to the return of Christ at the end of that period of time. We call this, by the way, the Battle of Armageddon. All those nations have come to destroy Israel only to find out that the Lord Jesus has brought them out there in that valley to be destroyed at his second coming. You can see uh, the book of Revelation where the Lord is going to descend to destroy this vast army. And by the way, he's going to be accompanied by the redeemed, those who will have been raptured seven years earlier, snatched up from the earth, all his redeemed. Now again, here in Joel chapter 3 and verse 13 The Lord's victory over all those defiant armies that march against Israel is is described here as a a divine reaping of the harvest and a a treading out of the grapes in the winepress. We see that image, by the way, over in Revelation chapter 19 as well. When Jesus returns at the end of the tribulation, Joel tells us here in verse 15, he will tread the winepress of the fury of of the wrath of God. All the unbelievers who survived this great battle of Armageddon are going to then stand before the Lord at the judgment there in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, Joel doesn't end here. In fact, in the final verses, he points up the road to the next phase of Christ's millennial kingdom on earth after Jesus descends with his redeemed. Verse 17 says, Jerusalem shall be holy and all the stream beds of Judah shall flow with water. Verse 18, the land is going to be productive, 
prosperous. The land of Judah, verse 20 tells us, will be inhabited forever. So this is a good reminder, beloved. No matter how bad things get in this present life, followers of Jesus Christ have an amazing future. It's a future of victory and joy just down the road a little ways. So let's not focus so much on the rear view mirror, what's behind us. Let's look forward. Even today, let's live in light of these prophecies of the coming day when Jesus Christ comes to rapture his church. And then that day when Christ with us returns to reign on planet earth in his millennial kingdom. Well, until our next session together, beloved, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.